Well, good evening and welcome to another Spirit Life broadcast. I'm Pastor Ken, and we're so glad you joined in with us this Wednesday evening, uh, the first Wednesday of the year. Amen? Amen. Well, let's say this together. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you and I free from the law of sin and death. You know, Spirit life, amen, is the life of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us that we come in contact with by the Word of God. The more we feed on the Word of God, the more the Spirit of the living God who dwells inside of every believer takes the Word of God, amen, and begins to manifest himself as we feed on the Word of God. And so we're so blessed to be partakers of this divine life, uh, eternal life, Zoe life, the life that Jesus died for. And so with that, uh, we take the meal that heals, the Holy Communion, amen, because Jesus said through the Apostle Paul, as often as we do this, we show the Lord's death until he comes. We confirm it. We announce it. We pronounce it. Amen. We declare it uh, in its authenticity. Amen. In its truth that Jesus died. He bore our sins and our sicknesses. He went to Sheol. He went to hell and suffered the penalty of sin. He paid the price. And then three days later, he rose with all power in his hand. Amen. And as we partake of this communion, amen, we declare, we announce, we confirm everything that has already been wrought through the ministry of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so uh, let's partake together the bread representing our healing and the cup representing our eternal forgiveness. Praise the Lord. We're so glad that we have passed from death unto life. John said, we know we passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. The, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Amen? And so we want to look at the, the life that we have in the Word of God the life that we have because of what Jesus has done for us at Calvary. Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says, Therefore being justified, that's a legal term, uh, justified means that all the charges against us have been dropped. Amen. Therefore being justified, by faith, our faith in Jesus Christ, believing that Jesus put on flesh, amen, and he walked the earth as a man, amen, and that he went to the cross, and that on the cross he took all of the sins of humanity, all of our sicknesses, all of our diseases, all of our abnormalities, everything that was wrong, Jesus took in himself on the cross, and then he was penalized. He was judged in hell. The word of God says, Be if you believe that, and that he rose up out of hell three days later, if you believe that, you're justified. All the charges are dropped against you. Sin no longer has dominion over you. You are eternally brought to a oneness with God. The word of God says when you get born again, the spirit of God comes into you and he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with him. So therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, there's peace with God that you make when you accept Jesus Christ 
as your personal savior. And then there's the peace of God as you learn how to walk with him once you are saved. You, you learn how to abide in him. You learn how to fellowship with him. Amen? You stay in the word of God. You, 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 you fellowship with other Christians of like precious faith. And so there is a distinction between uh, having peace with God and then having the peace of God. One is positional, one is conditional. Amen? And so it says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And so it says, uh, by whom also we have uh, access by faith into this grace. Meaning that by grace are we saved through faith, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Amen. So grace has been extended to humanity through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is a grace for every Christian, amen, that comes into the kingdom of God. But that grace is expanded as we believe by faith. See, faith appropriates. Faith begins to bring into manifestation what grace has provided. And grace has provided all things that pertain to life and godliness. This, I just want to give you a definition of salvation. Uh, salvation is uh, deliverance, preservation, material and temporal deliverance from danger and apprehension. It is pardon, protection, liberty, health, restoration, soundness, wholeness, and peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. And that's just a, a minuscule definition of this great salvation. Salvation entails everything that pertains, everything that you would ever need in this life and godliness. And of course, uh, in the life to come, a eternal uh, oneness with God Almighty. And so it says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. Amen. We, we receive this gift of grace and faith. And faith gives us this access into the favors of God. The free favors of God. And so all things are possible. Uh, Mark 9 and 23. All things are possible to him that believe because grace has provided all things that pertain to life and godliness. And it says, we stand in this grace. We stand in this favor and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, this godly hope means uh, an expectation of good, a earnest expectation of good things happening. And so the Apostle Paul says, we have access by faith into this grace, into this world of favor. And it says, wherein we begin to hope, we begin to have a expectation daily of good things to come. And then he says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Uh-oh. And so now, what are you saying now? The Apostle Paul says that this grace, this faith, having access to this grace, causes us to have a, a great hope, an expectation of good. And Paul says this hope even gets manifested 
in tribulation. The Apostle Paul says this hope was so great and it is so great that even in tribulation, you can find your way out. Amen. Romans 8 and 28. All things are working together for your good. Amen. Because you love God. His love is in you. Amen. And you've been called according to his purpose. So the Apostle Paul says he's even rejoicing in tribulation. This beacon of hope, this light is even shining in the midst of tribulation. And he says tribulation uh, works patience. And this word patient means to be constant. Uh, to be consistent, to be constantly constant. And so the Apostle Paul here says that this hope is shining so bright that it even shines in tribulation. And he's expecting good even in the midst of tribulation. And he says, he continues in the, the tribulation because tribulation works patience. Paul says he doesn't cave in. He doesn't give up. He doesn't quit. Even in the tribulation, and because he does not quit in the midst of the tribulation, he says tribulation works patience. He says he even gets more consistent in the fire of tribulation because this great beacon of hope has been established in his life. And it says, patient works experience. Amen. And experience hope again. Amen. And hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the precious Holy Spirit. And so we see a progression of thought. All the charges are dropped as we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. We're justified. Amen? We're justified by faith. And then through faith, we have access into this world of grace. Amen? All things are possible because that's the way God has made it. His grace is sufficient no matter where you find yourself in. And then he says this, 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 this grace is so wonderful that it causes us to rejoice in the hope of God. And he says he keeps on rejoicing even in tribulation because tribulation causes him to put on patience. And in this consistency of patience, the word of God says he goes on into experience and then his hope even gets brighter, amen, because the love of God is being perfected in him. James puts it this way, a very uh, similar passage. He says, count it all joy, James 1 verse 2, when you fall into divers temptation, you weren't expecting it, it just happened. He says, knowing this, know this, that the trying of your faith works patience. That's that uh, consistently constant. And if you've been born again for any length of time, you know that consistency is the key to the breakthrough. If you continue in the word of God, you're going to encounter truth. John 8, 32, and the truth you know will make you free. It's just not the truth will make you free. It's as you continue in the word of God, you're going to come in to, to this body of truth. And then it says the truth you know is going to make you free. So it says the trying of your faith is going to work patience, but let patience, consistency have its perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And so we understand as we start this year off, amen, that we are going to uh, 
possess the fruit of the Spirit like never before. And we're going to be constant. We're going to be consistent. Amen. And let the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, amen, the, the faithfulness, the meekness, and the temperance, the nine fruit of the Spirit, we're going to let them manifest in us uh, this year. And uh, we're going to do self-introspection, meaning we're going to do correction of the God kind. As we're in the Word, we're going to make the corrections, and we said that the correction is going to lead us into direction, protection, and the perfecting, amen, of our lives to the glory of God. We're going to see ourselves in the perfect will of God, doing what God has called us to do, and occupying in the earth, amen, waiting for Jesus to come with our hand on the plow. Amen. First Corinthians 9 and 10 says we are to plow in hope. Amen. We are to have an expectation that as we are in the word and as we're doing what God calls us to do, what he has called us to do, amen, that the hope of God, the, the expectation of his goodness begins to manifest in every facet of our lives until we are perfected, amen, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Amen. So uh, we bless you in the name of Jesus tonight. If you're afflicted tonight, we just decree and declare we agree with you that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Amen. You take that tonight. Amen. If sickness has tried to arrest you, you take that healing. It belongs to you. Remember, faith takes. The word of God says, we believe, we receive when we pray. That word receive in Mark eleven twenty four 24 means to take. Amen. You take your healing tonight. Amen. You take it in the name of Jesus and you tell the devil, you can't put this on me. Jesus took it off me and I'm not going to let you put it back on me. Take it. In the name of Jesus, declare it by faith. Prophesy over yourself. The word is true. And get in line with the word of God. Agree with the word of God. And take your healing. Amen. And if he continues to harass you, you begin to speak to it. Say to that pain. Say to that discomfort. You know, many people, when they pray, they ask the Lord to do something. But they never get into that radical warfare. The word of God talks about the violent taken by force. You got to start talking to that pain. You got to the pain, get out of my body. Discomfort, get out of my body. Get out of my body. My body's for the Lord and the Lord is for my body. I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. I'm redeemed. You know, you got to talk to that thing and you got to mean it. Amen. Uh, I heard this uh, a person uh, was talking about uh, one of the great faith men of God um, <clears throat> named Smith Wigglesworth. And he said uh, <clears throat> he was at the bus stop and uh, this old lady uh, dog followed her to the bus stop. And uh, she said to him, go on home. And he just kept standing there. And she said, go on home. And he said, she said, go on home. And the dog took off and started running. And Smith Wigglesworth said, yeah, that's the way you got to talk to the devil. You know, you got to take what belongs to you by faith. And you got to, you, when you say, you got to mean that. You got to talk to that pain. You got to use your authority. Amen. So use your authority tonight. Take what God's given you. Stay consistent in the word. Amen. And watch this year be a year of correction, direction, protection, and perfection in the things of God. The Lord bless you and keep you safe.